Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline, I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 31st of May. Female teacher shot dead by terrorist in Kulgam in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Nepal recovers bodies of all 22 victims of plane crash, voice recorder found. And Sri Lankan woman rickshaw driver struggles amid economic crisis, fuel shortage. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a roadshow and a massive rally in pole-bound Himachal Pradesh state on Tuesday to mark eight years of his BJP-led government at the centre. In his remarks, the PM said India has seen a sea change under the BJP with zero tolerance towards corruption and the country's borders now more secure than they were before 2014. He said his government is working to build a new India, not a vote bank. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday led a roadshow in Shimla, the state capital of pole-bound Himachal Pradesh state, and addressed a massive rally to mark the 8th anniversary of the Bharti Janata Party or BJP-led government at the centre. The Prime Minister also interacted virtually with beneficiaries of various central schemes and said corruption was viewed as an essential part of the system before 2014. But now, India has seen a sea of change under the BJP, with development a top priority. He asserted India's borders were more secure than they were before 2014 and added he is working to build a new India, not a vote bank. वर्ल्ड बैंक भी चर्चा करता है भारत के ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस की आज हिंदुस्तान के निर्दोष नागरिक चर्चा करती है अपराधियों पर नकेल कसने की हमारी ताकत की पीएम मोदी फर्दर सेड दैट देयर हैज बीन अ ड्रामेटिक शिफ्ट इन इंडियाज फॉरेन पॉलिसी सिंस हिज गवर्नमेंट टू कोवर ही सेड दैट इंडिया इज नो लॉन्गर हेल्पलेस एंड डज नॉट हैव टू बी फ्रेंड एनी नेशन इन कंपल्शन the Prime Minister's visit sounds the BJP's poll bugle in Himachal Pradesh, where it aims to retain power. The Assembly elections are slated to be held in November this year. A school teacher in Kulgam district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory was shot dead inside her school on Tuesday in yet another incident of targeted attacks on minorities. The police said that terrorists involved in this crime would be soon identified and neutralized. This comes weeks after a Kashmiri Pandit government employee was shot dead inside his office. In yet another incident of targeted attacks on minorities, a Hindu female school teacher Rajni Bala was killed on Tuesday after terrorists fired upon her in Kulgam district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory. According to police, the incident took place at high school Gopalpura area, where 36-year-old Rajni received critical gunshot injuries. She was immediately rushed to a hospital but succumbed to her injuries. The police have said terrorists involved in this gruesome terror crime would be soon identified and neutralized. Meanwhile, Kashmiri pundits on Tuesday hit the streets in protest in Srinagar city to protest the female teacher's killing which was followed by another targeted killing of Rahul Bhatt, a Kashmiri Pandit government employee, earlier this month. The demonstrators, mainly migrant government employees, called for security for the tiny Hindu minority in the region and demanded relocation. Earlier on Tuesday, two terrorists were also killed in an encounter with security forces in Jammu and Kashmir's Avantipura. 
The upsurge in violence comes as the federal government is also planning Kashmir's biggest annual Hindu pilgrimage to the Amarnath Cave Shrine starting June 30. And Nepali search and rescue teams on Tuesday recovered the body of the last of 22 people aboard the D Havilland Canada DHC 6300 twin otter aircraft that crashed in the Himalayas on Sunday and also found the flight's voice recorder. Two Germans, four Indians and 16 Nepalese were on the aircraft that crashed 15 minutes after taking off from the tourist town of Pokhara, 125 kilometers west of Kathmandu on Sunday morning. A spokesperson for the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal said the plane had only the voice recorder to preserve ground to air and air to air conversations. The 12 bodies were being brought to Kathmandu on Tuesday after the first 10 bodies recovered were brought to the capital a day earlier. Authorities said the bodies will be released to the families following an autopsy and identification. The Nepali government has set up a five-member panel to determine the cause of the crash and suggest preventive measures for the aviation sector. While well, moving on, scores of Baloch activists over the past weekend staged a protest against the 1998 nuclear blast by Pakistan in Balochistan region. They requested the international community that they should ban Pakistan's nuclear programs as they are suffering from several health hazards and diseases. Members of Baloch National Movement recently held a protest in Amsterdam. against nuclear test by pakistan in balochistan that have affected the people of jaghai district with diseases and several other issues on may 28 1998 pakistan tested six nuclear bombs within the jaghai district protesters chanted slogans and highlighted that people are still suffering from the serious effects of nuclear radiation in the region even after two decades the demonstrators appealed to the international community that they should ban pakistan's nuclear programs they said pakistan is a terrorist country and lethal nuclear bomb under its control is a big threat to the whole world we appeal to the international community by our protests that they should curb the nuclear program of pakistan pakistan is a terrorist state and lethal atomic bombs in control of pakistan is a looming threat to the entire world We request to the world that all nuclear weapons of Pakistan should be banned and sanctioned because Pakistan is engaged in war crimes in Balochistan. Activists have long blamed innocent Baloch people have been targets of so-called military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by Pakistani state while it exploits their natural resources. And the Islamic Emirate has refuted the United Nations report stating the presence of foreign fighters in Afghanistan. Afghanistan's foreign ministry in a statement issued on Monday rejected the UN Security Council report alleging that Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Emirate have a close relationship and that foreign groups including Pakistan-based Jaish-e-Mohammed and Lashkar-e-Taiba are in Afghanistan. Afghanistan's foreign ministry in a statement issued on Monday rejected the United Nations Security Council report alleging that Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Emirate has a close relationship and that foreign groups are in Afghanistan calling the allegations baseless the ministry said that since the return of power of the Islamic Emirate last August the world and the region have been prevented from facing any harm from Afghanistan and the government has worked to build an environment of trust with the regional and world countries the un security council analytical support and sanctions monitoring team in latest reports said the taliban and al qaeda remains close with the latter renewing its pledge of allegiance to malvi habibullah akunzada the supreme leader of the taliban and al qaeda has safe haven under the taliban and increased freedom of action The report also estimated that around 180 to 400 fighters affiliated with Al-Qaeda from Bangladesh, India, Myanmar and Pakistan are settled in Afghanistan's several provinces. According to the report, Pakistan-based terror groups such as Jaish-e-Mohammed and Lashkar-e-Taiba, led by 2611 Mumbai terror attacks mastermind Hafiz Said, maintain their training camps in some provinces of Afghanistan. and some of them are directly under the Taliban control. 
In news from Sri Lanka, life has become increasingly tougher for Sri Lankans ever since an unparalleled economic crisis hit the country, triggering acute shortages of food and fuel and sending prices soaring in its wake. Lasanda Deepthi, a female auto rickshaw driver, says her monthly income has fallen nearly 50% because of the combined effects of lost time, currency, depreciation and soaring prices. Lesanda Deepthi, a 43-year-old female tuk-tuk or auto rickshaw driver who lives in a small two-bedroom rented house in Sri Lankan town of Gonapola, plans her day around fuel queues. Deepthi is one of millions of people in Sri Lanka battling galloping inflation, falling incomes and shortages of everything from fuel to medicine as the country reels under its worst economic crisis. A woman auto rickshaw driver is a rare sight on the island of 22 million people. But it is a job Deepthi has done for seven years to support her family of five. Since the financial crisis hit, she has been scrambling to find adequate petrol and earn enough as rights dwindled due to inflation. Her monthly income of about $138 started falling from January and is now less than half of what she used to earn. In mid-May, Deepthi said, assisted by her brothers, she spent two and a half days in a queue for petrol, prices of which have soared 259% since October 2021 as the government slashed subsidies to try and stabilize a teetering economy. Her only wish and hope is for the current crisis to end and for a sunny picture to return again to her beloved country. Meanwhile, reports suggested the World Bank has pledged to disburse nearly 700 million US dollars to Sri Lanka within the next few months during talks between World Bank official Chio Kanda and Sri Lankan Foreign Affairs Minister G.L. Paris in Colombo on Monday. This comes as the island nation is also engaged in negotiations with the International Monetary Fund for a badly needed loan package. And moving on, famous Punjabi singer turned politician Sidhu Musewala, who was shot dead in a suspected inter gang rivalry on Sunday, was cremated in his native village in India's Punjab state on Tuesday. A huge crowd gathered in Musa village in Punjab's Mansa district as Sidhu's family decided to perform his last rites in their agricultural land. The body was brought to the farmland on his favorite tractor. The murder has triggered a huge political row in the state as it happened just a day after his security was scaled down. The Punjab government has ordered a judicial inquiry into the incident. 28-year-old Sidhu's death is being mourned across India and Canada where he had gone as a student. He won the Best Lyricist Award at the Brit Asia TV Music Awards in 2017 for his rap song So High. He had made his political debut in 2021 when he joined Congress which is the main opposition party in India. And the annual Mango Fair in India's southern Bengaluru city has returned after a two-year COVID-imposed gap. Currently underway at Lal Bagh Botanical Garden, the festival promises everything the residents have been missing and is attracting mango lovers and locals in and around the city. After a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the annual Mango Fair aimed at promoting different varieties of the popular fruit is being organized in India's southern Karnataka state. Mango lovers and locals from in and around Bengaluru city were seen attending the festival at Lalbagh Botanical Garden that was inaugurated last week and will continue till June 30. Mangoes of all shapes and sizes and different varieties at discounted rates are being displayed at the festival. Visit, visit Mango Mela where you can find a good mango. So no farmer's intention is to sell the mangoes. His intention is to uh, make his product to visible all over the nation. Bangalore is one type of city where you can see multiple language people or multiple community people and we think this is the best platform to market our own product. The festival provides a platform for farmers to sell the produce directly to consumers. 
and for visitors to get naturally ripened fruits. Yeah, feeling good that it has come back and uh, there are a lot of varieties of mangoes here. So we are trying one by one, like we are confused what, which one to buy because so many varieties are there. India's mango pulp market caters to some of the world's biggest food and beverage players including PepsiCo, Coca-Cola and Unilever. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.